Okay, we're going to do a tutorial on how to use paint to set up the color grid for your color coded card weaving. So you want to click down here in the bottom corner and pull up your menu and then you're going to want to roll down until you see P and you will find should find paint but it is not in there. Okay, so what you'll do is you'll come down here to the search box you'll type paint then paint will show up if you right click on that there we go you can say uh, pin to taskbar and what that will do is that will put paint down here on your taskbar to make it easier to find every time you can also choose to pin to start menu I already have it pinned to the start menu so that didn't show up as an option but one of the options that will come up is pin to the start menu and then you can just pin it to your start menu like I did right here and it'll show up there as well so that's two ways you can make it easy to find okay so I'm gonna click on paint here's paint and you'll see there's a big white workspace and what I'm gonna do is I'm that's too big so I'm gonna come down here with my cursor and I'm gonna go to this little dot in the corner until I see two arrows I'm going to hold down my left mouse button and I'm going to drag that window to a much more manageable size. Okay, a lot of these tools you'll see the four little dots on the corners and that means you can drag them and resize them. Okay, so for the purposes of what we're going to do, I want you to come up here to this select, click the down arrow and come down here and hit transparent selection. That's important. Then you come over here and you've got all these different tools. We're going to select the rectangle tool. Then we're going to come over here and we're going to make sure that this color one is the important color and we want it to be black. You would just select it by clicking on the color square to change the color, but we want it black. Then we're going to hold down the left key and we're going to drag the mouse to create a square. Get it approximately the size we want. And then I'm going to let go of the left mouse button come over here to where it says size and pick the smallest size then click somewhere else in the white space and it will drop the box in there now we've got over here we've got this this select and we got this square click on that square up there it's actually a little rectangle and then hold down the left key and drag over your square and what you're doing is you're selecting everything inside that box now we're going to make a copy of this box by holding down the control key and pressing the right arrow. Then you let go of the control key and you start tapping on the right arrow and it will move the copy of the box over until it lines up. Hold the control key down, press the right arrow to make another copy and then press the right key to get your box to slide over and you'll do that let's say we're gonna do um, eight cards so I'm gonna do that one more time so that we get four squares Then I'm gonna click somewhere off on the white space away from it now I'm gonna left click and drag another box over the four when I hit the control right arrow it's gonna make a copy of all four boxes and then I don't have to sit there and redraw all of them I can move four at a time there now we have eight boxes going to left click and drag and select all of that then I'm going to hit control and down arrow and then start typing on the down arrow and move that whole row down until it lines up control down do it again we're going to say this is an eight card repeat so we're going to go down and we're going to go there's our four and then I'm going to click off click back select control down arrow and now I'm going to move all four of those rows down I'm holding down the down arrow by the way it, so you don't have to tap it a million times and now I have eight rows and eight cards and I'll click off somewhere away from it to undo the frame there okay now up here you see these tools there's a little paint bucket you want to click on the paint bucket and you want to come over here and you want to select the color that you want to fill the squares with we're going to do red color one here should turn red 
And when I put my little paint bucket over a square, I just left click and it will drop the color into the box. If I make a mistake, I can come click the correct color and come back and just drop it over that and fill it in. Now, sometimes when you're clicking, you'll accidentally click the frame. If that happens, hit the hold down the control key and press Z. And that is the undo button. So anytime you make a mistake, you just hit control Z and it'll undo that mistake. But you need to catch it immediately after the mistake. Now, it say you make a mistake and you do two steps after that, then you realize the mistake. If you press control Z three times, it'll walk back three steps and undo the mistake. You lose the two things you did after the mistake, but you can walk it back and undo your mistake that way. And you can go back quite a number of steps before it it stops working. I think it's like 36 or 24, 36 steps you can back up to. So then you just come in here and you just fill in the, the colors as you need them for each set of instructions. Now, if you want, you can click on this select frame over here and drag a box over that and then you'll get four arrows and when you do that you hold down the left key and you can drag your frame anywhere you want on the picture. So I'm going to drag it up here and then I'm going to click off that and then I'm going to come down here to this bottom corner until I see two arrows and I'm going to drag that up to there. Now I've only got my frame. Then I'm going to save it. I'm going to say file, save as, oops, Okay, I want to be a PNG. I'm going to save it in my picture folder. And we're going to call it uh, 8 by 8 grid. Okay, now let's say we have downloaded some pictures of some instructions. So we're going to come over here and say open. We're going to come over here and we're going to pick one of the pictures we've got. And this is one I did a while back. And I'm going to see this little dot on the side. I'm going to hold it down until I see two arrows and I'm going to drag it off to the right so I have more workspace. Then I can come over here under paste. I can say paste from. And then I come over here to my uh, pictures and I have this 8 by 8 grid. And I'm going to click on it and then click down here on open. It's going to drop my picture in the upper left corner. Then I'm going to get my, you can kind of see my four arrows. I'm going to have my four arrows over it. And I'm going to hold down the left key and I'm going to drag that over to where I need it. Then I'm going to let go and click off of the box and it is there. And then, like I said, you can select, if you need to adjust it, you just select it, drag it to wherever you need it. That way, if you have instructions, you can add a frame and fill it in. Now, this one's already done, so uh, I'm going to get out of that. Um, and I'm going to hit new and it's going to say, do you want to save it? I'm going to say no. Okay. Now, one of the things you can do is you can come over here. Uh, I'm going to select a new window and I'm going to pop it over here. I'm going to go to Google, google.com and I'm going to type in here pin tryst card weaving directions I probably spelled Pinterest right I did so it says uh, 997 best card weaving images on Pinterest and there we have instructions now some of these instructions aren't going to be very clear um, this one's probably not clear. Let's select this one. I'm going to left click on it and then it'll come here and then I'm going to left click on that picture and it's going to blow it up really big and it's got nice clear instructions on it. I'm going to right click on it and say save image. It's going to come into here. I got pictures. I got SCA, but we're just going to drop it in the main picture folder. I can rename it if I want. I'm not going to. This starts with F14. Okay, we're going to hit save. Then I'm going to open up my folder. I'm going to go to pictures. And I'm going to scroll down here until I see. 
right here, this image. And then I'm going to right click on that image and I'm going to select edit. And that pulls it up into paint. I'm going to go right over here to this little right arrow and click down and drag it over so I have some workspace. Okay, now in this case, I can see these instructions. Where's my cursor? I see these instructions, and the left ones are the forwards, and the right ones are the backwards. Now, as you see, the largest number in those instructions is 30, so that tells you this is a 30 card. Um, design. So then what I'm going to do is I can either create my own frame over here, go, just like we did before and make it 32 wide and all that, but I can also come under here and say paste from and get my 8x8 eight eight grid and put that over there and I'm going to drag this workspace. I clicked off that to get rid of that frame. I'm going to drag this workspace wider and this instruction here, you can see that it repeats every 14 turns. So I'm going to want 14 in a row. So I'm going to click on the paint bucket. I'm going to, since the color 2 is white, I'm going to right click on the blocks to turn them white. So left click puts color 1 in there, right click puts color 2 in there. So you generally leave color 2 to white. Anyway, you can undo the colors. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to select, just like I did before, control right arrow. Oops, I have to go set the select over here down to transparent selection. There we go. Now I'm just going to move my box. That was 8. This is going to be 16. So then I'll just do this until I have 32. And we'll pretend we have 32 across. I'm going to select control down arrow. Now, I need 14, so I have to position this in such a way that I have 14, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Okay, I have 14 rows now. And then if I stretched out to 32, I'd have 32 blocks. Now, if this is too big for you, you can right-click or, you know, put the frame around it click on this bottom corner and you can adjust it a little bit but if you adjust it too much you lose your frame so and I messed it all up so I'm gonna I'm gonna select it and I'm gonna hit delete and that takes it out okay so in this case because my grid was so big I would have to start over and make make a new grid using smaller grid and then once you're done with that, you just come over here and you click save. And it would save your grid and everything down there. So that kind of gives you an idea about how you can find patterns and then make the grid to do your color coloring chart. Now, I'm going to give you some quick instruction on how to um, actually color in your chart. It's a little too small. Okay, that's a good size right there. I'm not going to do... all 32 cards. We're just going to... do that. And then... I'm going to put some rows on here. Come down here and put a few rows. We got five. Okay, so we need more than five. So we'll go three. Reselect, drop down some more. And one more time. Just pretend that's 32. Okay. So we're going to read the instructions, and the instructions, always, you always start your cards on blue. So, um, just to help you out, just to help you out, I'm going to put this little chart up here. I'm going to put the colors. So the first color you turn is going to be yellow, 
second color turn is going to be red, third color turn is going to be green, and the fourth color turn is going to be blue. So that helps you to see what you're supposed to be doing. So when we're down here, the first row says 1 to 30, which is all the cards, get turned backwards. So if we're on blue to start, turning it backward, we're going to go to green. So we'll select green, and we'll say all the cards are going to be green. And then we have to do that five times. So rolling it back from green, we'll go to red. Rolling it back from red, we go to yellow. Rolling it back from yellow, we'll go back to blue. And one more roll back will take it to green. Oops, select the green, there we go. Okay, then on row six, it says nine through 15 are gonna go forward. I right, see right here, and one through eight is gonna go backward, continue going backward, but nine through 15 is gonna go forward. So we're gonna pretend that the left two are supposed to go forward and the right two are supposed to go backward. So the left two forward from green, forward from green is blue. So we would select blue and those left two go forward. And they were supposed to go forward for two rows. So we'll go from blue to yellow because that's the next one. Whereas over here on the left, the, or, or the, on the right I should say, the right two have to go backwards. So backwards from green is red. And then it does it twice, so backward from red is yellow. And I did something wrong here because that shouldn't have worked that way. Oh wait, this is a this is a weird one. That's right, it was five turns. Okay, normally you don't have red and blue together. Okay, so let's go back. We're gonna do this again. See, I, even I make mistakes. Okay, so we go back five. We're gonna go forward again. So, so that would be blue, and then forward again would be yellow, and backward from green would be red, and then backward from red would be yellow. And then the next one, 1 to 30, is all forward. So forward from yellow is red. So everything goes forward to red. And everything goes forward from red to green. So we fill in the green. And that's basically how you do it. You just figure out, you count over the numbers, and the way you go. Now, how do you keep track of which row is which? Well, you come over to this black A and you drag a box down here. Let's change our, our color to black. So we have black text. I'm gonna drag that box out and I'm gonna type one space, two space, three space, four space, and because we got four rows. And then I'm going to come down here to this bottom corner, get my two arrows. I'm gonna drag it down till it's about the right size. And then I'm gonna put my cursor down here in the bottom until I see those four squares or four arrows and then I'm going to drag this up here okay and you come over here to where it says 17 and you can change how big oop, you have to drag over the numbers to select them and then you can change how big you want them to be I'm going to type 17 here because that was the right magic number and then I'm going to click off of them to put my numbers there. Now, as you can see, these are just a hair hair bigger. So I'm going to put a draw a box around them, and I'm going to go to this right box with my two arrows, and I'm going to shrink it. Just holding down the left key, I'm going to drag it a little bit until it fits. If you have to drag it too much, it'll distort the numbers, but that's good enough. And then you can do the same thing for if you want it to be rows. You would say start backwards. We would say, and this is what, a 60, 14. So we go 14, return, 13, return, 12, 11, 10, 9, etc. Come down here and drag my little, put my little two arrows in the corner. No, that didn't work right. Okay. Try it again.
I'm going to drag a box over it, hit the delete key and delete it. We're going to come back to the arrows and we're going to draw this down and we're going to say uh, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, etc., etc. Um, highlight all of my dra left drag over to highlight it. 17 over here was too big, so we're going to try 14. And then I'm going to come down here to this bottom arrow. I'm going to drag that down, which is what we were supposed to do last time. Get my four arrows. Where are my four arrows? It's being touchy. Come on, there we go. I'm going to drag these numbers up, and I'm going to say, are these numbers lining up? They're not quite. They're just a hair too big. So I'm going to try 12. 12 is not bad. So then I can just drag it over, and again, if you have to, this if you can click on that bottom arrow and drag that just a tad, make them just a tad bigger so they all line up properly. And then you can number your rows as well. And if it's a really wide pattern like this, I would suggest that you um, number both sides. It'll make it easier. Now, here's a trick. Come over here to the select, drag a box over your numbers, Hit your left or your control left arrow and then drag those numbers holding down the left key until you get them to the other side. And then you don't have to redo the other side. You can just drag the numbers over there. Little trick. Okay. Hopefully that is everything you need to know. If there are questions, you can always contact me at mcook at dakotalink.net. That would be M cook at dakotalink.net that is my email you are welcome to email me with any questions you have I'm also on Facebook I am in the North Shield Arts and Sciences uh, page uh, as well as the main North Shield page so you could post a question there probably best to do it in the North Shield Arts and Sciences you can post a question in there and I'll see it Anyway, hopefully that was everything you needed to know. Thank you very much, and good luck with your card weaving.